Hey everybody, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to another episode of Ask This Old House, which is packed for you today. But first, I am on my way to New Hampshire to go visit a very historic house that has been beautifully maintained and restored, but they still have a little bit of work to do on the wallpaper. Hi there, Kevin. Hey, Sarah. Nice to see you. Yep. Welcome to the Franklin Pierce Homestead State Thank Historic Site. Thank you very much. And uh, this was built in 1804 by Franklin's father, Benjamin. Of course, that uh, Franklin did grow up to be our 14th president, but he spent the better part of the first half of his life in this house. Nice. And we've got some really excellent wallpaper that you've heard about. I have heard about it. Love to see it. And, and a little bit of the house, too. Sure thing. All right, lead on. Yep. And do watch your step here. Always, old <laughs> okay. houses. Well, this is the off season, so this is when we do most of our work on the house. Okay. And this room right now is our dining room, but originally, when the house was first built, the back rooms in the house were being used as private rooms for the family, mm -hmm. and the front rooms were public rooms used as a tavern. Oh, really? And so this room started out completely unpainted and plain, and this is where Franklin spent most of his time when he was a little boy. But later, as the family became more affluent, it would have been decorated as a dining room, as you see it now, by 1824. That was the year that Franklin graduated from Bowdoin College in Maine at the age of 19. And is that the same era that the wallpaper is sort of frozen in time in? Yes, it is. I'd love to see that. Well, we can go see it right now. Well, in here, Kevin, you'll find our formal parlor. Over here, you can see our professional paper conservators, Luana and Suzanne, and they can tell you a lot more about this wallpaper than I can. Terrific. Well, thank you for the tour. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet this you. This is a little unexpected. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. This is ornate. Yes, it is. It's uh, a unique example of French wallpaper uh, produced in France. and. I was very surprised to find it in New Hampshire as well, because this is usually found in large villas and uh, big palaces in Europe. Mm. And these are extremely expensive. This one particularly took from 1800 to 2000 blocks of wood to produce. What? Each color has its own block. And they went from each scroll to scroll and uh, that's how they were produced. So how long does that take? It took roughly three to four years to produce this particular series. Good heavens. And um, the really interesting fact is that this was so contemporary because this was produced in 1824 and it arrived here um, by ship uh, in occasion for General Lafayette's visit, apparently. <laughs> so when you say Lafayette, you're talking about the French general who helped us out in the Revolutionary War, the hero of the Revolutionary War? Yes, indeed. So get some uh, French wallpaper to impress him when he comes? <laughs> yes. Terrific. <laughs> apparently so. And um, so these wallpapers are in excellent condition, considering the damage that you can see. And so what sort of damage are you dealing with? So we have basically water damage, where you see the tide lines, which are darker. And here you have insect damage. You see these lace outlines. And you have also losses of uh, wallpaper and loss of adhesion. Well, understanding how unique it is, I now understand why you guys are going to such lengths to conserve it. So I'd love to see your process of doing that. At the beginning of our project, we photo document everything before we can start. And then we proceed to surface cleaning and we try to remove as much dust and insect uh, debris that's on the surface possible. And what is she using? She's using a vulcanized non-latex, that's very important, rubber um, sponge. And um, it won't leave any residue on the surface, that's very important. Gotcha. And then she just switched. Is that a smaller version of the same? What she's using now is a cosmetic sponge, also with elements so that it won't leave residue on the surface of the paper mm. without removing any media or damaging the surface of the paper. And when you say media, basically, none of the color, none of the pigment comes exactly. off. Exactly. Sort of a slow patient, painstaking process. It is. You can really see the dirt now on, yeah. the, on that white sponge right there. On the front. Okay. 
Now that we've completed the surface cleaning, we can proceed with infilling of the paper losses in time from the wallpaper. We outline the area first on this mylar paper, which assists us for cutting out the infill as close to the size as possible. We use a Japanese paper, which has long fibers, and it's flexible, and it's also durable, and it complies to our uh, necessities in conservation of okay. papers. And we outline it with this pen so we can cut it out. And we adhere it with a methyl cellulose glue, which, uh, itch it, which is stable and neutral, and also used in wallpaper hanging and um, we let apply that and let it dry. Then we come back to the working table and we cut out the tone paper so that it reaches the stage of the background. Is this any special paper as well or is it's, this? It's the same Japanese paper, the only difference, it's been toned with acrylic colors which mm. are non-soluble. Okay, so it's layer on top of layer. Yes. All right, well, I'll let you work and follow along. Okay. So now we go on to the in-painting section, the final section. Okay. We use gouache, which are pigment-based, mixed with a white base so they're, that they're matte colors. Mm -hmm. And we also use pencils, crayon pencils that can be used on uh, directly on or for reducing stains or also for infilling certain small details. And, and seeing your tools here, I presume you're, you're mixing these a million different ways to get just the right color? Correct. This is very tedious because we have to check with the papers, trial and error until we reach and oh. when it dries because it changes color upon Essication. So you mix and then we'll apply to the um, paper, we'll let it dry, look at it, put it up to the wall, back and forth until you get it right? Correct. Whew. That's, the, oh that's the process. And, and what's the effect you're going for? Are you trying to replicate what was there so that we have a perfect match? No, we're not. We're doing on a tonal basis so that the eye in the end can interpret and integrate what's missing because we do not know what was there. We can't integrate something that we don't know was the artist's intent. So it's a bit of an illusion. Let the mind fill in the details for you? Yes. If you've done your job right. Yes, it, huh. hopefully that's our goal. <laughs> well, I, it, it sounds tedious, quite it honestly. Is. How long will you be at the in-painting? Well, we have a, another week of, of conservation and then we'll have another week of wow. in-painting. <laughs> okay, well, I'm obviously not gonna stick around for that, but I am fascinated with the process and thank you for showing it and for what you're doing here. You thank and you. Suzanne. Thank you thank very you. much. Right. Well, have fun. A pleasure, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.